Here's a timeline of the events of the past week. The 11th of September, 2001. WCBS News Time 848. It's traffic and weather together. Tom Kaminsky, Chopper 880. All right, uh, Pat, we are just currently getting a look at the World Trade Center. It's 8.52 here in New York. I'm Brian Gumble. We understand that there has been a plane crash on the uh, southern tip of Manhattan. You're looking at the uh, World Trade Center. We understand that a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. We don't know anything more than that. We, we heard it and and because I was just like standing there pretty much looking out the window. I didn't see what caused it or if there was an impact. So you have no idea right, right oh, now? Oh, there's another one. Another plane just hit. <gasps> right. Oh, my God. Another plane has just hit. It hit another building. Oh. Flew right into the middle of it. Explosion. Oh my right, God. It's right in the middle of the building. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. Oh my goodness. We're looking at a uh, live picture from Washington and there is smoke pouring out of the Pentagon. It would appear that there has been another major explosion, this one in the nation's capital. Dan, over my shoulder you can see the uh, fire engine still trying to put out the, uh, the fire that began when the plane hit the uh, building. If you were uh, at a different location, you would be able to see that that plane cut into that building just like an ax into a birthday cake. At least four large commercial airliners have been involved in today's attack. On the left is the World Trade Center. We have smoke billowing out of both towers. Um, it has been for over an hour now. Um, we also have smoke coming out of a portion of the Pentagon on the right-hand side of your screen. That has been going on for about 10 or 15 minutes. It would seem that the United States on this day is, um, is under attack from terrorists. It collapsed. The top floor has collapsed down. All of a sudden I heard a roar and I saw one of the towers blow and then collapse and fill the horizon with smoke and I yelled, oh my God. And I saw from street level as though it had exploded up a giant rolling ball of flame and the firefighters screamed, run. And I turned to run, but I fell and I felt someone scoop me up, tell me to throw my high heels off. And I was running in my stocking feet with him. And finally, as we ran and ran, he slammed me into a wall and covered my body with his. I could feel his heart beating against my backbone. And I think both of us were sure we were dead. Chaos. It's just chaos out here. It really is. Wait a second. This is, is this a live picture? This is a live picture. We are seeing the second World Trade Tower Center. World Trade Center Tower number one has just collapsed, ladies and gentlemen. You see it live in our picture. So the Twin Towers fall. It's amazing. There was tons of company giving May days. We lost tons of guys. Dateline Freeport, Louisiana, Barksdale Air Force Base. Air Force One is reported to have taken off from Barksdale Air Force Base, where we played a videotape with the president had to say there a short while ago for, we're told, points unknown. The Pentagon has put all its bases on the highest state of alert, and the State Department has done the same thing with American embassies around the world. The early suspicion is that Osama bin Laden was behind this, and U.S. officials say eventually there will be military retaliation. <laughs> A world away, there was a far different reaction. Gunmen appearing to applaud today's terrorism, but Palestine Liberation Organization leader Yasser Arafat did not join in. We are completely shocked, completely shocked. In Afghanistan, a spokesman for the ruling Taliban, who provides sanctuary for terrorist leader Osama bin Laden, said he could not have been behind the attack. Everybody out! Everybody out! Back home, it was if war had been declared. 
But tonight, in an incredible show of bipartisan resolve, hundreds of members of Congress gathered on the steps of the Capitol. It was a kind of thing seldom seen here, and in a touching close, they literally sang the praises of their country. God bless America, my home sweet home. The search is underway for those who are behind these evil acts. I've directed the full resources of our intelligence and law enforcement communities to find those responsible and to bring them to justice. We will make no distinction between the terrorists who committed these acts and those who harbor them. Dan, it didn't take long, and it's unclear whether it will lead to anything, but federal investigators are on the move tonight, serving search warrants and questioning potential accomplices to these attacks. As the day ended in New York City, another skyscraper in the World Trade Center complex crumbled. Building number seven, 47 stories high. Tonight, while smoke from the collapse of the Twin Towers still lingered over New York City, most who saw and survived this day still had trouble believing what they saw. The phrase you heard over and over again was, it seemed just like a movie. Our spirits will not be broken. The resilience of this society will not be broken. We will find out who is responsible for this, and they will pay for it. The four planes were hijacked by between three and six individuals per plane using knives and box cutters and in some cases making bomb threats. Our government has credible evidence that the White House and Air Force One were targets. The Department of Justice has undertaken perhaps the most massive and intensive investigation ever conducted in America. Whatever the terrorist objectives, it was soon clear that what they had accomplished is this. They had unified a Congress that until yesterday had agreed on virtually nothing. This is war. And we will do everything in our power together to make sure that terrorists never, ever again can create this mayhem, this chaos, this violence against our people and our country. We are, we are conducting a recovery, a recovery day. When a firefighter takes this job, he accepts certain realities of going where other people will not go. Right, refuse to go. The, the old saying, everybody else is running out and you're running in. Best, best job going. <laughs> There are people who'd wonder if you could possibly mean that today. I mean it more than ever today. If you would like to volunteer, you would not... Hundreds of people hoping to volunteer their time or donate their blood or give from their wallets streamed into Midtown New York to the regional headquarters of the Red Cross. I have blood and um, I know that there's a great need for blood so it seems to be at the moment the only action I can take to try to in some way help someone. Since yesterday, James McGinnis has been a volunteer at Ground Zero. Well, we just left and they were pulling out about... We pulled out about five or six bodies about an hour ago. It's a very McGinnis body. is an emergency room nurse by profession, but the reason he came here is personal. I came down because I lost my brother in this. So Your brother was in the trade center? My brother was on the 92nd floor. Can you process that? I mean, can you? No. I took my brother from it. Not something I'm dealing with yet. It's 6 p.m. in the Eastern Time Zone now, and a New York City Police Department spokesman has said that the remaining floors of the South Tower of the World Trade Center and two neighboring structures have collapsed within the last few minutes. This has been a tremendous blow, obviously. And keep in mind that there are many, many people dead in that debris. How many we cannot know. Uh, no one would be surprised if it doesn't run uh, into the thousands. Where are all the people who are in these buildings? 
the buildings were built, the structural support of the building is the shell, is the skin of the building. I remember when they were built, I'm a New Yorker. The innovative architecture, architecture of it is that the, the outer shell is where the strength of it is. And I think what happened is the whole thing imploded. It was like a chute that went straight down. What does that mean to the inside? It means that the explosion has nowhere to go except down. Um, I think another building collapses, there's toppling, pieces fall off, there's a diffusion of the energy, and in this collapse, the energy all went straight down. And I think that, tragically, it, anybody in that chute did, did not survive. I think mean, it probably had the force of close to a nuclear blast. The investment firm of Cantor Fitzgerald occupied floors 101 to 105 of tower number one of the World Trade Center, nearly 1,000 employees. So far, only a fraction of them have been accounted for. For the families of the missing men and women, this home in Middletown, New Jersey, has become ground zero of grief. Joanne, let, let's, let's talk to you first. When was the last time you heard from your husband? Um, like uh nine o'clock two minutes to nine when the plane hit the building well, what did he tell you um he called me up he said um i might not make it the plane hit the building there's a lot of smoke <laughs> the sailing's caving in i love you give the kids a kiss <laughs> Hi. Hi. what's Hi. your name jack Lord Fergio. okay um is this a picture of your dad yes my father, his name is David Perugio. David. And he wears a gold cross and has a big letter D on it. David Perugio. David Perugio. He's a big letter D. And he's about 5'8, 135 pounds. He's, he's built. And he's got it. He's, it must be frustrating as a nurse to have so many victims here yeah. and you can't get to them and you can't help them. No, no I, I think at this point, uh, when you know, in that kind of situation, the best thing that we can do is to try to do the right thing for the remainder of the family. You know, try to locate their loved ones, properly identify them, and hopefully have give them something to have a closure with, you know, uh, to put this into perspective. For a moment of perspective, look at the Trade Center towers before the attack. Tower number one held a 300-foot mast used for television transmitters. Firefighters believe this is the tip of that mast today, standing upright but at ground level. By late afternoon, a fireman carried an American flag to the mast and raised it. Fellow firefighters wept as the stars and stripes flew in the smoke-filled sky and remained above them as they worked into twilight's last gleaming. After the terrorist assault that shocked the nation and now is moving it to action, a dazed country begins to stir and move toward recovery. I think about the families, the children, I'm a, I'm a loving guy, and I'm also someone, however, who's got a job to do, and I intend to do it. Two days after terror first gripped America, the world's busiest airport was back open for business, and this country was back flying again. International number one. International but getting into the airport is still not the same thing as getting into the air. All flights are canceled today. All flights, all flights are 100% canceled all day long. On the floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, traders tentatively returned to work Thursday. But there was no panic, and at exactly 11 o'clock, trading calmly came to a stop for a moment of silence. Let me talk to you about some video we have, amateur video. We've got some firemen here who've rescued themselves. They're coming out of uh, the disaster zone. They somehow got caught in there themselves. This is amateur video you're looking at. You know, this is a big moment for these guys. They've lost their buddies. They've lost hundreds of their buddies, several hundred. And to find each other, Dan, is truly a miracle. It was a moment of life in another day of death in Lower Manhattan. The city officially estimates 4,700 missing, but everyone here expects that to climb much higher. 
Authorities are poised to release the names and photographs of the estimated 18 hijackers, but federal investigators are still not certain they have accounted for all the terrorist pilots. The terrorists who seized controls of the planes all attended aviation school in the United States, some as recently as a year ago, and FBI agents were busy today searching the former apartment of two of the suspects who were at the controls during the World Trade Center attacks. Using airport surveillance video, credit card receipts, and the passenger list, the FBI believes it has identified all the hijackers on the four flights. Unless contradicted by uh, evidence which uh, we wouldn't anticipate. Uh, two planes had five hijackers and two other planes had four hijackers each. Good morning everyone on what President Bush has declared a national day of prayer and remembrance for victims of the terror attacks here in New York and at the Pentagon in Washington. today is that we will feel the loving arms of God wrapped around us and will know in our hearts that he will never forsake us as we trust in him. We also know that God is going to give wisdom and courage and strength to the president and those around him. And this is going to be a day that we will remember as a day of victory. War has been waged against us by stealth and deceit and murder. This nation is peaceful, but fierce when stirred to anger. This conflict was begun on the timing and terms of others. It will end in a way and at an hour of our choosing. The president's helicopter is beginning to move into position here in New York City. Standing atop a mountain of sorrow, President Bush today mourned the first victims of America's new war. America today is on bended knee in prayer for the people whose lives were lost here, for the workers who work here, for the families who mourn. The symbols of U.S. dominance in ruins around him thousands dead beneath the rubble. Mr. Bush promised exhausted rescue workers those responsible will pay a heavy price. USA! 